here we go. This is pretty much the file you saw at the beginning. Uh, this is the flag file. It's all set up, ready to go. This is not cached or anything at the moment. This is just playing straight through Bifrost. And it's really, really similar to what we've just done, but obviously without the tearing. Oh, we'll just stop that. So I'll take you through it really quick. So that is my flag file. Let's change it. And this is the plane I'm going to be using for my flag. Now this is quite low resolution for speed, which means you're going to get a chunkier sort of outlet, but you can see what the resolution is. It's 32 by 16 and it's 10 by 5. And again, I'm scaling my points up and using it as a reference point position. And this is just, I'm just displaying the flagpole here. If we follow this pass down, the flagpole instead of the spheres is what's constraining the MPM now. So the change I had to make here was I, when we were using spheres, we had this set to bounding sphere. This needs to be bounding box or it's going to constrain all the way out to here. Found that out the hard way. The other one it's doing, it's coming down here. It's also colliding with the flag. And that's so that if the, the wind whips it backwards or it ch changes direction, it's not going to go straight through the flagpole. So that's, that's what the collider is doing. And this is all pretty familiar. So here's your collider here. Here's your sulfur settings, simulation engine. There's your constraints and there's your inputs. Here are the settings that I've, that I've used to get this flag to work. Feel free to screenshot that or whatever. Start at frame zero. It's quite light, has no viscosity at all, almost no area preservation whatsoever. This is desperately trying to get it not to stretch. Vibration speed is pretty high. Collision max speed is about half that. It's very, very thin, has quite a lot of friction, no initial speed, no preserved volume, no tearing. That's pretty simple. Okay, so the big difference between what I've done here and what you've just done is that this has an influence on it. This has a wind influence on it. So before we do anything else, I'm going to take that out, rewind, save, and just play that and show you what it looks like when there's no wind. So it just falls and it folds, collides with the pole doing its thing. All right, it's just being a flag. No wind there today. Maybe a little bit. Well, it looks like there is, but there's not. But that's it. So I wanted to bring something into Unreal that was at least nominally interesting. <laughs> so what I've, what I've done is I've come up with a wind. And the way I've done this is still, everything starts with a time node. And it gets converted into a scalar field for two turbulence field, one one noise field, uh, sorry, for two fields. One noise field, one turbulence field. So that's scalar, that's vector. The vector one is being multiplied by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, which means that it's it doesn't really have much in the way of X and Y movement, X being out this way and Y being up this way, but it has a lot of Z movement because the flag is pointing along Z. I want it to make the wind blow along a certain direction. In here, I'm doing, I'm just making sure that my Z value is an absolute value, it's not negative, and then I'm negating it. Because the reason I'm negating it is the flag is pointing along minus Z. So I need that to be all the same sign. So at this point, it's all positive, and then I negate it, so it's all negative. X and Y don't, don't get touched. And then for both fields, I'm moving that field based on the negative frames along the Z. So it's actually moving the fields along in the negative Z direction. Fractal noise field, pretty simple. Magnitude 25 and all of that, all your frequencies and stuff are up to you guys. You'll have this file to play with as well. And then I've just set an F curve field here to modulate the size of that field. And what that is, is it goes from 28 to 32. So what comes out of a fractal noise field is usually I mean, I could now set that to 1. It wouldn't matter because this F curve field is now taking over the magnitude of this field and converting whatever comes out of here to 28 to 32. Gets translated, gets packed into the wind influence. So our scalar field is the wind speed because the speed is a float value. It's just an amount of speed. The turbulence field goes into the wind direction because the wind direction is a vector value. And then I've got a small amount of drag on here. So let's plug this into the influences and see how that looks. 
can immediately see the effect of the wind pushing along that direction and the wind itself is moving. So I'm translating both of those fields along at the same rate. So, you know, it's it's not the best looking flag in the world. It's very low res, but it's, it's good enough to do it. And you don't want things too high res in engine anyway. Even if you do have Nanite, maybe you're outputting to Unity or Godot or an engine you've built yourself or something. So you see it stretches out in the beginning when the field first takes it. We could fix that with a initial state. But I'm trying to avoid stretching on this mesh as much as I possibly can, which is why my vibration speed is set very, very high for the size and the resolution that this is. All good. We have a flag. It's doing flag stuff. This is what we're looking at right now. Turn that off. There it goes. Goodbye flag. Okay. The next question is how do we get this out to Unreal? And the way we get it out to Unreal is through USD, which we'll be covering in more detail next week. But just to show you really, really quickly, I have a compound here that I have made with the help of the amazing Guillaume Lafourche, who's pretty much in charge of USD on the Bifrost team. And he's helped me with a lot of this. So big thanks to him. This will output an animated mesh to USD. And Feel free to jump in here and take a look. I'm not going to explain it too thoroughly until we get to USD properly. But essentially what it's doing is defining a USD mesh, a USD transform. And then the USD mesh has frame enabled. So the frames come in. And you have another you have a little iterate node called animated stage, which is just adding the stages together. You know what an iterate does. We went through loops in week three. So basically that stage is just being added to every single time. And then when the frame reaches the end of the frame range, and we've set a frame range here, which is number of frames right there, which in this case is 128. When that hits the, hits the frame range, this flips over to true and the save stage is done. And written out. When it's false, the result of this is the result of this is still being put out. So you can see it as it plays, but it's just not writing out until the very end. And then all I've done to add to that is I've added the static flagpole there to the stage in between the animated stage and the save stage and the if statement. Pretty much how that works. There's the, the compound that makes the flagpole and gives it a little color. So what that means is that every time we play it, we've played this with USD output switched on, it's been saving this. Let's change that back to USD and let's call this something else. And we'll need to play it one more time to get it to save. Remember, it only saves at the last frame. That's okay. It doesn't take too long to play this. And of course, you guys are lucky because I'll be speeding up the video in between times. Why was my zoom not working? So let's play that. And that's now written to USD. I'm going to take that back to the beginning so I'm not overwriting the USD file when I'm trying to work with it in Unreal. Let's jump across to Unreal. We'll open a level, test level. Flag's already in, but I'll show you how do we get it in. With the right plugin loaded, like we've done a couple of weeks now. You just open, look for the file that you've just made. There it is. Open that. There it is. We'll pull that up. This file contains its own sequencer, so we can play that. And then there's our flag. It's going to turn off looping because Unreal has a tendency to crash the second time around. Something to do with the geometry crash. I'm still trying to work that out. But there's our flag. There's our motion from Bifrost into Unreal as data and you can do what you like with it. So that's it for NPM. Very powerful simulation system, but laid out in such a way that once you learn one simulation system, you can pretty much use all of them. All right, well, have a good week. Um, if you would like to, feel free to expand on all of this, work on some of the stuff that we've done. Try getting your own cloth assets out to the Unreal Engine. Get them out as assets. Get them out as sequences. Um, that doesn't have to be flags. It can be clothes hanging on a line. It can be it could be a garbage bag that you've relaxed. 
that could probably be a static mesh though. Try a static, try an animated. Uh, use the you feel free to use the USD nodes that I've got in the file to do it. One's for animation, one's for one's for stills, and yeah, just have fun with it. And I will see you next week where we embark on USD. Thanks a lot.